So first we're going to go create a project by hitting that start coding button right there. And while it loads, there we go. So now we're going to close up the tutorial. I don't like the scratch cat, so I want to pick a different sprite. And if you go ahead and look at these sprites as you go through, you can mouse over them like I'm going to do with this bat here. And you can see what their animations are, the kind of things you can use to make your sprite a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I'm picking the bat. And now our first step is going to be to make it move up. Oh, sorry, first we have to adjust its size. I wanted to put it as 50%, and then we're going to make it move up when we hit the up arrow key. So go ahead and slick, select the, the move button or the event button for space. We're going to choose up arrow. And then we're going to go ahead and have it change its Y, that's its up down, by 10 every time we hit that up arrow. We're going to do the same thing to make our bat go down. We do that, we duplicate it. And this time we're going to have the down arrow and we want it to change by negative 10 in the Y direction. Remember, our Y direction is our up and down direction. So let's test that out. It goes down and it goes up. Perfect, now we're gonna pause here and you're going to see if you can figure out how to do this with your left and right arrow keys so it'll go from side to side. So we're gonna do the same basic thing. We're going to choose our event of when the space is pressed, but we don't want it to be when the space is pressed. We're going to change that to when our right arrow is pressed. And this time we chose the change X by 10, not our Y. We're going to duplicate that, make it so that when the left arrow is pressed, we're going to go negative 10. That's what's going to make us go to the other side. And then we're going to test it out because we never do too much code without testing bits at a time. Now our bat goes up and down, left and right when we press our arrow keys. Perfect. But that's kind of boring because usually when we're playing a video game, our character changes its direction when it goes up, down, left, and right. And that's what I want our bat to do. So we're going to have it point in a specific direction when it goes up, down, left, and right. So I always like to check that 90 degrees means it's still staying the way it was facing. We're going to change that so that it points the opposite direction when it goes down. Don't trust that arrow because it's having the bat face towards the right. So we want it to go negative 90 for our bat to go down. Oh, look at that. And then again, we're going to pause here so that you can try and figure out what to do with your left and right motion yourself. Don't worry about getting it wrong, just give it a try and we'll go over it. So it's the same thing, we're gonna point it in a specific direction. In this case, the direction is going to be 180 for our right. Double checking to make sure it actually is 180. And it's going to be zero for our left. And again, we're going to test it to see if that's what we agree with, to make sure everything does what we expect. Now I specifically chose a bat that has some costume animations. And I want to go play with those here in a minute. Open the costume tab so that my bat can flap its wings when it's flying instead of just dancing through the sky. So if you kind of click all the costumes, you'll see that some of them really aren't part of the animation. They're different. But if I go back between one and two, I can see that that's what's making it flap its wings. We find our costume information up in the looks area, the purple tab. 
So I'm going to want to switch my costumes back and forth between A and B. But first, I want to create an if statement. That's in my control. So I want to see what costume it has right now. We got to kind of put that in there. It's not going to go where we want it to, so we're going to put it in there. And then we're going to move the blocks that went inside of it back out to the outside. So I'm going to say that I want it to switch over to costume B, but first I need to see what costume it is on. We're going to do that by going up to the looks button again, looking through all of these. Here we go. It's down here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And we will see a little round button that says the costume number. This is part of our if statement. See how this one is round? And up in our if statement, we have a diagonal one. That means we need to have a kind of a hexagon one. That means we want to be able to have an operator to fit in there. And we're going to check to see if the costume number is equal to 1. And if it is, we're going to switch the costume to bat B instead of bat A. But we really wanted an if else because we don't want it to only check if it's do something if it's 1. We want to check and do something different if it isn't 1. So if the costume number is equal to 1, we're going to switch it over to the bat B costume. And if it's not 1, we're going to switch it so that it is 1, which is bat A. Perfect. And again, we're going to check this out before we go any further. See if it does what we want. Oh, there it goes. I'm going to fly it back down. It's not moving there because we haven't done anything in that direction yet. We go up and we can see it's flapping its way up the board game. Perfect. Now you're going to take a moment here and you're going to try and do that yourself for each of the other three directions. You can pause the video. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to duplicate that block. Unfortunately, we get the ones underneath it too. So we can just drag those off to the trash because that's going to be, oh, first we'll get rid of this one. We'll drag these other guys off to the trash. And now we can just duplicate this block over and over again and put it in for each individual direction. If we were really good, we'd make these into a function, but I think we'll save that for another day. And here, let's try it out. We have a bat that flies down, it goes to the side, oh. it goes to the other side, and it goes up. So that is our player character. Next time, we'll work on creating our enemy characters that will hurt our player. Okay, so you can go check us out on Scratch. I've linked the comment in or the the link in the comments and we'll go from there.